From grinding some grocery store-bought beans with a $28 Hario hand grinder to purchasing a $160 electric gooseneck kettle to finally diving into the deep end of espresso with a Gaja Classic Pro and Niche Zero. The coffee hobby has quickly spiraled out of control and into one that is both an endless wallet draining pit, but also provides a delicious drink to kick off the start of every day. Hey, it's Chris and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I redesigned and built the ultimate home coffee bar in this little six by four foot corner of my apartment. If you are interested in anything on or in my coffee bar, there'll be links to it in the description down below. And if I have a review of said product, I'll also leave a link to that below. So if you've seen any of my past coffee bar tour videos, then you'll know that I've generally struggled with one big thing, lighting. I'm happy to say that that has finally changed. My current lighting setup includes using the Falconize RX24 TDX, which is a very slim, rollable, flexible LED panel that I have mounted to the ceiling with some Velcro tape. Unfortunately, this light panel does require a massive control box that I have routed out of the way and hanging on a command hook on the door. While not a pretty solution, this does allow me to control the brightness and color temperature of the light panel, and this thing is bright. In fact, it's sitting at just 1% brightness right now. And here's what it would look like at 100% brightness. The next big change to this corner is the modified Husky workbench that I've placed over the top of my existing sideboard. Now, I changed to using a workbench because I frequently have multiple heavy machines and equipment and didn't want to overload the sideboard's capacity. After some careful measurement, I was lucky enough to find this Husky workbench from Home Depot that fits over the top of the existing sideboard like a glove. Unfortunately, it did arrive a bit dinged up and damaged, so I went ahead and sanded down the top, refinished it with a dark wood stain and a few layers of polyurethane, and this is the final product. Now, I'll never have to worry about weight capacity if I'm testing a few different machines while still retaining all the storage space that my sideboard offers. The next change here is obviously the slat wall. I've removed the shelves I used to have mounted and all the decor that was in the area. I then went ahead and filled the holes with some drywall patching stuff, sanded it down, and gave it a few coats of fresh paint. It's not a perfect job, but the dark matte gray paint from Benjamin Moore does blend pretty well without having to repaint the entire wall. The slat wall themselves I ordered from a company called The Wood Veneer Hub, and these are oak wood slats with black acoustic foam in between. One set comes with two pieces that measure about 8 feet tall and 12.6 inches wide each, for a total of just over 2 feet in width. The slats do come unfinished, so I treated it with some wood oil just to give it a little pop, and I think it looked a lot better afterwards. I knew I wanted some bias lighting around the slats, so I got some wood from Home Depot that measured an inch thick, 4 inches in width, and about 6 feet in length. I cut these down to about 2 feet long planks and mounted them 2 feet apart on the wall. I then took the wood slats and mounted them to the wood planks. I then got some Govy LED strips that already came very nicely diffused to avoid those beady little LEDs that you might see when you have exposed LEDs along the sides or on something. And then I mounted those along the sides of the wooden planks. In hindsight, I would have done this step first before mounting the slat wall. While not perfectly straight, you really don't really notice the imperfections as long as you're not looking directly at it from the sides. And now I've got a really nice soft light on both sides of the slat wall that look nicely diffused and has a plethora of scenes from the Govy app. And that is more or less all of the changes I did to this corner from my previous coffee bar tour, at least in terms of the sort of decor and surrounding area. So now let's go through the actual gear and the things that I use to brew coffee at home. Let's start with the center pieces of the bar, the espresso machines. Currently, I am running a two machine setup, which also brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Cliff and Pebble. If you're in the market for your first or next espresso machine, grinder, or coffee accessory, be sure to check out Cliff and Pebble. The Chicago-based team has a huge selection of machines from some of your favorite brands, including Rocket, Lalite, Eureka, Brazza, and more. They provide excellent pre- and post-purchase service, and you can rest assured knowing they'll help you out with your coffee brewing endeavors. Currently, you can also use promo code CHRIS at checkout for a free Akaya Lunar with any espresso machine purchase. Yes, any machine. Just be sure to have both the scale and the machine in your cart at checkout. Once again, thanks to Cliff and Pebble for sponsoring this video. So on the right is the Lilith Bianca V3 from Cliff and Pebble, which I do have a full review on, and it's a dual boiler, PID enabled, flow controllable espresso machine with some unique electronic modes that allow for great levels of control and consistency. The second machine is a little bit newer, and I do have a first impression and unboxing of it, and that is the Profitech Pro 800, which is a PID enabled spring lever espresso machine that I absolutely love using. It's so much fun being able to really put the phrase pulling a shot of espresso to work. 
More thoughts can be found in my first impressions video and a full review which I'll leave a link to in the description once that is available. For my grinders, I currently have the Turin DF64, the new Espresso-focused DF64P, the Niche Zero with a portafilter holder attachment from Swerk's Design, the Goat Story Arco, and the Comandante C40 Mark IV. Now before you go wondering why I have so many grinders, I started with the Niche Zero for Espresso, got the Comandante for filter and traveling, then got the Arco as a standalone travel hybrid unit, then was sent the two different DF64s to try out. So yeah. For my other espresso brewing gear and accessories, I have the Akaya Lunar Scale with a custom wood piece from Urban Dosing Grounds, a wooden box that holds my cleaning brushes and some Kruv brew sticks, a Posado dosing cup, an RDT spray bottle, the Mocha Mondays puck screens of course, which you can find a link to in the description down below alongside a discount code, the La Marzocco Walnut Knockbox, the St. Anthony Industries Block Tamp Station, a 3D printed WDT tool, and my custom olive wood and brass Pullman Big Step Tamper. I have a bunch of other tools and accessories in the drawers that I'll show you guys later in this video. For my main filter brewing gear, I have the Fellow Stag EKG Kettle with Walnut Wood Accents, the Filter Holder from FDM by Optical Blitz on Etsy, and the Akaya Pearl S Scale. Other decor on this top section of the bar includes a Supreme Red Mocha Pot, because why not? And now, moving on to the storage. In the first top drawer, I have all my different brewers from the V60 to the Hario Switch to the Fellow Stag, Aurea, and a few others. This is also where I keep my milk pitchers for easy access, and these are all from Slow Pour Supply, which I've been using for a couple years now. I absolutely love their WPM pitchers. My personal favorite is the Handleless, but I like to use the 10 ounce the most to save some milk and have less wasted milk, especially if I'm only pouring one drink in the morning. In the second drawer is where I keep all my other random tools and accessories like my assortment of tampers, including the Happy Tamper, the Newton Tamper, the Barista Hustle Tamper, and a few others, as well as some portafilters like the Posado ones, the stock ones that come with the machines, and this really cool carbon fiber one with a built-in WDT tool from Plenum Labs. Finally, in the bottom drawer is where I house coffee beans and all the coffee bean bags I've finished so far in 2022. Not sure why I'm keeping them, maybe just interested to see what's memorable at the end of the year. Now moving on to the left side of the sideboard, this is where I keep an assortment of random things. On the top shelf is mostly some carafes, and on the bottom are things like the motorizer for the Comandante C40, my fellow Atmos jars, the third wave water packets, and just generally stuff. Over on the right side of the storage unit, I have a bunch of cups on the top shelf, which I do have a video on what some of my favorite drinkware is linked up here, here, one of these areas. Under that, I have some instant coffee Copico bags, which are the best kind hands down, as well as some more random storage pieces and gear I've received over time. And that is my coffee bar tour, featuring everything that I use to brew everything from espresso to pour over and everything in between. As mentioned earlier, if you're interested, there'll be links to everything featured in the description down below. As always, thanks for watching, like this video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.